what's up guys, back again with another video on the C++ series. This time I'm going to teach you how to work with enumerations. Alright, so we're done with structures for now. Um, we'll be using structures in the future for our future programs, but uh, we're going to be done with the main structure videos for now because um, you can do a lot of stuff with structures that I haven't showed you already, but we're going to be doing all that stuff with classes anyway, and it's actually recommended that you use classes instead of structures. But uh, before we get into any of that, we're going to learn how to use enumerations, which are another type of user-defined type or abstract data type inside C++. So I've actually showed you in one of my older videos how to use enumerations, but in this video I'll show you in a little more detail how to use them, and also the next video too. So um, yeah, so enumerations, okay, enumerations. And so what is an enumeration? An enumeration, you can think of it as a set of name constants, integer constants. So a set of named integer constants. So we know about integer constants um, so far, you know, just const integer uh, size is equal to 56, right? That's a simple integer, that's a constant, it can't change, right? But let's say we find ourselves in a situation where we have similar things that we want to group together and we can use a constant to represent each of those things. Of course, you could just type them out, uh, make a variable for each one, like Monday is equal to zero, const integer Tuesday, is equal to one and so on, you know, zero through six, but it'd be better if you can group it together into one single data type, right? Because the whole point of abstract data types and user-defined types is to make a custom data type that you can easily use and group together stuff to make, you know, a custom data type, right? So that will help us very much. So we're gonna use an enumeration for that. So how do we make an enumeration? So you're gonna specify that you're making an enumeration with enum, and then we can give the enumeration a name. So what do we want to name our custom enumeration data type? We'll just, we'll just call this one day. And uh, what are we going to represent inside of our enumeration? What are going to be the enumerators of our enumeration? So for day, we'll do Monday, Tuesday, and so on. But uh, by the way, for the naming, you could do all caps. That's like the, I believe that's the original convention for making enumerators. But I think nowadays um, people do it like this. So just a capital first letter. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and if I can type Sunday. So these are our numerators for our enumeration. So we got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So although these look like words, they're actually, you can think of them as variables. These are all constants. And if you hover over it, it says value is zero value is one, so if you click this, a value is one, value is two, value is three, value is four, value is five, value is six. So each of these enumerators are constants that have number integer values assigned to them. And if you don't assign custom values to them, like we could also do E, I mean Monday is equal to 45, then this would be 45, right? But if you don't assign a, a custom uh, number to it, then it's going to start at zero, and then one, two, three, four, and so on. It's zero based, okay? So anyway, what we've done here is made a custom uh, enumeration data type that represents all the days of the week as constants, okay? So before I show you how you can use enumerations in your programs to make programs better, let me show you how you can make variables that use our custom data type or enumeration. So first, we're going to give you know provide the data type that you're storing in the variable. So we'll say day. And now we give it a name, so favorite name, favorite name. And we can leave it uninitialized if you want to. And we can give it a new value, so fa or initialize it. So favorite name is equal to, and right here you can do one of two things. You can either type the day that you want to store inside of here, like Tuesday maybe. Actually, my favorite is Friday, so we'll say Friday. And that works because Friday is definitely an enumerator, a valid enumerator of day. And it's valid because, of course, you're declaring all the enumerators that are valid for day whenever you make the enumeration itself. So we're storing Friday inside of day. And um, another way you could do it is you could say favorite name is equal to, uh, let's say one, right? But you can't do that. One is an integer, right? And you're trying to store inside of here a day. One is not a day. So how can we convert this integer here back into a day? So since um, these enumerators here are made up of values like one, two, three, four, five, the numbers can be converted into an enumerator, okay? So let's say we want to convert one into an enumerator a day. So we, we can do it with a static cast. So static cast, and we put inside of your day the thing that we want to cast it to, and then we put the value that we want to cast it from. 
So one is going to be casted from one, an integer, to a day. So yeah, that's another way you can represent enumerators, but it's a little difficult to do it like this. It's kind of a hassle, you know, having to cast it and all that. So might as well just use the enumerators themselves, the name, okay? So um, besides that, you can also, if you want to, instead of having a variable that stores a day directly, you could also just have an integer. So integer, we'll say day as number is equal to, and you can, in this case, store a number if you want to. So let's say we want to represent uh, Thursday, we could put three, and that's valid because, of course, this is just a simple integer, right? But we can also type in uh, Thursday directly if you want to, and this will automatically be converted to a three, right? Because Thursday or three uh, is stored inside of Thursday, right? So there's nothing invalid about that. Uh, sadly, it's not compatible the other way around, right? But you have to cast it. But for this purpose, in case you want to store an integer directly, you can use an enumerator in its place, which will be converted to the integer itself, okay? So anyway, now that we have our favorite name uh, day variable here, we can do some stuff with it. We can print it out if we want to. So let's see what happens when we print out an enumerator or enumeration. So C out favorite day. Oh, I can't do C out because I haven't uh, done the using namespace STD. So using namespace STD. So now I can do C out. So C out favorite name. And let's see what it prints out when we do this, when we run this. So as you can see, it printed out four to the console. So that's something you have to be aware of. Whenever you try printing out an enumerator, it's not gonna print the enumerator as like a string or something like that. It's gonna directly print out the number that the enumerator represents. In this case, Friday represents four. So that's something you need to be aware of, okay? So switch statements are a common use for enumerations. Um, if we have an enumerator called birthday, birthday, and it's equal to Tuesday, we can then use a switch statement to uh, see which enumeration or enumerator is being uh, used here. So we'll have a case for each enumerator. So Monday, and for Monday, we can say something like Monday. And of course we have to type Monday out manually. We have to output a string manually because if you print this out, what does it print out? It prints out the constant that's being stored here. So in this case, it would print out zero. So that's why we're outputting it instead of just doing C out Monday like that. And then don't forget to break. And then case Tuesday. So if we were to print this out, we would get, let's see what we get. We should get Tuesday printed out into the console. So yeah, we get Tuesday. And uh, this is just a very simple example of using a switch statement with enumerators or enumerations. But uh, yeah, this is very common to use switch statements with it because you can clearly see um, which one is being selected, which enumerator. It's just very nice, okay? And we can also use enumerations with custom values like I explained a second ago. So let me you know explain that a little more for you guys. So uh, let's say we want to give um, Monday a custom value like 67. So because of the way that enumerators work, if this is 67, every value after that is going to be incremented by one. So let's say this is 67. So this would be Tuesday would be 68 and this Wednesday would be 69 and Thursday would be 70, 71, 72, 73. And you can see that if you click on it, it says value is 73. Okay. But if let's say we, we go along here and we go on Wednesday and Wednesday we say is equal to 100. That means that Monday is going to be 67, Tuesday is going to be 68, Wednesday is going to be 100, Thursday is going to be 101, Friday is going to be 102, and so on. Okay. So it just depends on what the value is before. But if this is 100, it doesn't it does not affect what is you know in front of it. It only um, affects what's behind it because. The one that comes behind it is going to get the value from what is ever whatever is in front of it. Okay, so 67, 68, 100, 101, 102, 3, 4, and like that. Okay, and uh, you may be wondering what situations you might want to use this for. Let's say we have an enumerator called temperature. So enum temperature scale, and we give it two enumerators. We give it the enumerator of freezing, and we'll say freezing is 32 because water freezes at 32. Fahrenheit, and then we have boiling, and we'll say that is equal to 212 because water boils at uh, 212 degrees, okay, Fahrenheit. So this is a great example of, you know, having custom values for your enumerators. So then we can make a integer here called temperature, and we can ask the user for the temperature of their water. So enter the temp of your water, and we'll have them input that. And then depending on what temperature they just entered, we can then figure out what to output. So if the temp is less than or equal to freezing, oops, freezing, that means that the temperature is less than or equal to 32 degrees. 
that means that we want to say your water is frozen and then otherwise else if temperature is greater than or equal to boiling aka 212 degrees then we will say see out your water has boiled and now else otherwise if the water is between freezing or boiling then we'll simply say the water is still just a boring normal liquid okay and let's add it in line to all of these here okay pretty simple there we go so let's try running this and see what happens Okay, so enter your, uh, enter the temperature of your water, and we'll say 300, and it says your water has boiled, which is exactly right because our temperature is higher than 300, so or higher than 212, so obviously it has boiled at some point. And yeah, so that's a very simple example of how you can use custom enumerators. Also, let's say you find yourself in a situation where you're not making a variable of this type, but you're still using the enumerators. You can create something called an anonymous enumerator just by removing the name. So in this case, we don't need to have the data type, you know, we don't need the enumerator to have a name. So um, we can just leave the name without it and now it's anonymous. So all we need is the enumerators to figure out what the temperature is greater than or equal to. We don't need, you know, the name for any purpose at all. So here's just one more example of a anonymous enumerator. So let's say we have um, enum color. Uh, instead of putting color, we can just actually have the colors here. So red, green orange and blue and so as long as we don't need to make you know let's say this would be called color as long as we don't need to make a variable of the type color then there's no purpose in having it named color okay so that's just another way another example of that but uh, let's see what else we can do with enumerations we could also compare them so these all have number constant values assigned to them right like zero one two three so if we want to do something like integer i mean if red is less than or equal to orange, that's perfectly valid because that's the same thing as saying is zero less than or equal to uh, two, right? Which is of course valid. And uh, you can do that as long as you want. But the only thing you can do with enumerations is you can't do math with them, math with them because, um, well, you just can't. So if you were to do something like, let's give this a, a, a name, so color. If we were to do something like color, uh, color is equal to red, you cannot do color plus plus, or you can you can't even do color is equal to color plus one. Um, you can do static cast and then do it, but uh, you would have to do this. So static cast color color plus one. That's perfectly valid because you're just um, behind the scenes color right here is going to be converted to. Uh, whatever color is so whatever integer this represents and then it's going to be added plus one and then that result is going to be set inside of color here but you can't do you know uh, colors equal to color plus one because the result of that is going to be a number not a color okay hopefully that made sense but uh, yeah you just can't do math with it unless you do you know static cast but you know at that point in my opinion it's a little uh it's a little too much work in my opinion. So that's actually all I'm going to teach you about enumerations this episode. Next episode we'll do some more advanced things with enumerations, but that's about it for the basics. Um, next episode I'll be teaching you enumerations again, like I said, two seconds ago, but then after that we'll finally get started with classes and object-oriented programming, so stay tuned for that. And if you want to see all the code for today's episode, then check it out in the description below. I'll leave a link for you, like usual, and you could bookmark that for future use in case you want to come back and look out um, look at how enumerations work in detail and all that fun stuff, okay? And then also you can join our Discord community if you want to. There's a link for that also. So you can get some friends if you need any or get some help with your programs. You can just come hang out, whatever. It's up to you. And yeah, so one more thing. If you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video. And you can join this channel as a member for not, as low as 99 cents a month. So, And you can cancel any time if you want to. Um, so yeah, it's up to you. You can become a supporter and you get some cool perks like... You get to be mentioned in my videos like you see on the screen right now. You'd also get a cool Discord rank on my Discord community. And uh, you also get early access to these videos. So if you want to get early access and all those other perks, then go ahead and join. Like I said, for as low as 99 cents a month. And that's about it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.